you ever wondered about the thousands of steps and man hours required for a successful launch into space? Well, a project like that starts with a concept. In this case, we're going to follow an idea to its final conclusion. The idea was hatched by two scientists who worked at a major defense contractor where I worked. Their idea was to place a probe in a launcher on the side of the Atlas rocket. Their experiment was going to ride the Atlas rocket up beyond the atmosphere, and then the launcher is going to rotate and fire its probes off from the side of the Atlas. And we were awarded the contract. Then our engineers began their detailed design of the probe and the launcher. One of the important problems they had to solve was getting the nose cone on the launcher out of the way of the probe when it was fired out into space. Their idea was to have a partial hinge on the nose cone. As the rocket pushed out from the launcher, the nose cone would be thrown to the side. A little wire would pull the spacer out of the way. The rocket would continue to push the probe out of the launcher and on into space. The launcher was designed to sit on the side of the atlas pointing in the direction of travel. At the appropriate time, the launcher would rotate 45 degrees and then fire the probe out into space. The launcher was going to sit right above some of the other hardware on the Atlas missile. So, that's the conceptual design. The next step was to test the probe for all the shaking and g-forces it was going to experience on its travel to space. One of the first tests we did was for g-forces encountered during launch. The probe was mounted on the end of a merry-go-round-like test ring, sped up, and the internal components were subjected to high g's, just as they'll be during the rocket launch. Thorough testing is required on the ground. If any weaknesses are found, we could correct them before the actual launch. Now, the probe will be launched spinning, so it had to be tested to see if it worked properly while spinning. Measurements were made while it spun on this lathe-like setup. All these spinning tests were successful. The next step was to start testing the actual launcher. Could the launcher withstand the shaking and vibration during the launch on the side of the Atlas? Here, the launcher is being set on a shaker table. The test was a success. Everything stayed together. The next series of tests involved perfecting the method of getting rid of the nose cap attached to the launcher as the probe exited the launcher. The launcher was placed on a large indoor platform. It was enclosed in a protective heavy net. The engineers could run multiple tests to tweak the nose cone components to get the cap away from the launcher barrel quickly. Now, in order to do this without having to use a rocket to push it indoors, they used pneumatic pressure to push a piston against the probe. The piston was calibrated to give the same acceleration as was expected from the probe's rocket. They could load, fire, tweak, and then reload and fire time after time. Each time it was fired, electronic measurements were made of the piston's motion. Slow motion film was used to analyze the result of each tweak and test. Finally, we had to test to see whether the launcher would rotate properly 
on the side of the atlas. This is that simulation. The rotation test was a success. Now, the last and final step in the testing process was to fire a simulated probe with a real rocket out of the launcher. Thus, the entire launching system was to be tested. Does the rocket push the probe out of the launcher properly? Does the nose cap come off properly? Are there any problems that need to be fixed? This was a kind of a dress rehearsal. The rocket had to be prepared. The launcher had to be installed. And many, many cameras set up to record the launch in slow motion. The launcher was aimed at a target. The little rocket was carefully prepared. The little rocket was attached to the probe. It was adjusted and lined up properly. Its thrust had to be lined up straight through the center of that probe. The probe was taken and inserted into the rifle barrel of the launcher. You can see that this wasn't easy. There was some force required. That little rocket is going to have to push hard to move the probe out of the launcher tube. The rocket was secured with a little flange at the back. When the little rocket ignites, it will push the flap and release the probe to move. Finally, the probe was ready to be fired. There goes the probe. It looks like it was a success. Let's see what the slow motion cameras show us about the event. Well, the nose cone didn't seem to come off quite as fast when we look at the slow motion replay. The nose cone stayed right in front of the probe too long after launch. At the back, the flap released just fine. Everyone headed out to see what the pieces looked like after its flight. The pieces seemed to be in fairly good shape. Just hammered a bit. Now it's time to go back to the lab, check the pieces more carefully, redesign based on what they'd learned, test again, and then come back to the firing range for a second round of testing. Again, the launcher was brought out to the firing range and erected. The little rocket was attached to the probe. The probe was inserted into the launcher. The many slow motion cameras were mounted and readied. The engineers had done a good job in estimating just how much thrust the little rocket needed to push the probe and nose cone out of the launching barrel. The little rocket was armed. Finally, everything was ready for test firing of the probe from the launcher. Everyone's ready and anxious. The countdown begins. The slow motion cameras are turned on. The rocket acted a little different this time. The small adjustments have resulted in the nose cone coming off faster and the probe traveled farther. Let's look at some of the slow motion replays of the event. The nose cone comes off faster this time, but still not quite as fast as we'd like. Here's another slow motion shot. When the final testing cycle is completed, we get scheduled for a real launch. Our engineers head to Cape Canaveral. This is the Atlas missile we're going to have for our flight. We work for the same company that builds the Atlas missile. Now the same engineers who developed and tested the probe from the beginning went with the probe to Cape Canaveral. They were very familiar with the probe, how to handle it, and how to set it up. The same process they'd been through many times before.
the probe was manually inserted into the rifle barrel of the launcher. Next came the two other components of the nose cone. Finally, the whole assembled and armed unit was taken over to the launch pad. A sling was attached to our launcher. It was carefully raised up the side of the scaffolding. I was surprised to see that the lifting was done manually, by hand, by one man. But it worked, slowly and carefully. The design of the launcher unit had included knowledge of the Atlas missile and the scaffolding surrounding the missile on the launch pad. So there was an opening in the side of the scaffolding superstructure where our rocket launcher could be brought in and attached to the side of the Atlas. There had been lots of man hours expended working very carefully to create, assemble, test, and attach this one little experiment. The scaffolding surrounding the atlas was pulled away slowly. Now the missile was exposed. Everything seemed to be ready for launch. It was on schedule. Here it goes. Outside the atmosphere where our launcher is to rotate and fire. But at about that very same moment, something went wrong and the entire atlas blew up, exploded, out beyond where we could see with our eyes. The first impression was that we were responsible for the disaster. But on more careful examination of the data, it was determined that something else caused the explosion. Fortunately, we had a second, or backup, probe and launcher that we had assembled and tested. We brought it out to Cape Canaveral and a second attempt. The second launcher was attached in the same way as the previous one. The Atlas scaffolding was pulled back and the second Atlas launch took place. We were all holding our breath. And we also had our fingers crossed. Thankfully, it was a very successful launch. And we had a successful experiment. I hope that this video helps you see that it requires many, many man hours, some very creative engineers, and a lot of money just for this one little experiment. Now, just think how much more is required for the big, successful space missions. <laughs>